Calgary Flames general manager Craig Conroy recently sat down for a one-on-one -on -one interview with Eric Francis of Sportsnet, and he addressed many issues that Calgary Flames fans were concerned about. And one of the main ones was the health of both Dan Vladar and Martin Pospisil after they have suffered injuries in the past few months. Well, Conroy addressed this topic among others that we will dive into in this video. But first, I want to welcome you to Flames Digest. I am Mark Griffith. If you're new around here and you love the Flames, make sure you subscribe so you can stay up to date on all of the latest news, updates, reports, and rumors revolving around your Calgary Flames. We would love to welcome you to the Flames Digest family. And you know how we do things around here. We're just going to dive right in to some injury updates. We want to know about the health of these couple of Calgary Flames, our beloved men from Eastern Europe. And so Vladar and Pospisil, in case you somehow forgot, uh, they did both get injured for Vladar. He underwent season-ending hip surgery way back in March. Um, and at the time, it kind of gave Jacob Markstrom... Uh, the full reins and Dustin Wolf was supposed to be on emergency recall. Well, that didn't really happen. It kind of gave Dustin Wolf the full reins. It was kind of his team down the stretch, um, which was great to see. That was actually one of the benefits, I suppose, of Vladar going down. But hopefully Vladar will be back on track to fully recover. He did need this hip surgery. It's not like the Flames were like, yo, take some take some time off. We need to get Wolfie up in here. He did need this surgery in order to recover from this injury. And it's great that it did happen. And then on the other side, of course, with Pospisil, he was knocked out of the tournament as in the double IHF world championships in case you forgot um, after that he suffered that strange upper body injury against Sweden trying to hit Victor Hedman and it was too bad for him it took him out of the tournament he was no longer able to play against Canada which ended up being um, a win for Canada knocked that wagon of a Slovakian team out after Pospisil was having such a good tournament which is too bad but let's dive into this article so it's the same interview I've talked about over the past couple of days I know there's been many videos sprinkled here and there over the past couple of days but a couple days ago I used this same interview to address the Jacob Markstrom trade rumors then yesterday it was kind of some draft plans for the flames well guess what I'm using the same interview the same article from Sportsnet and Eric Francis and this one Here's the question. So Sportsnet, as in Eric Francis, asks, how has Dan Vladar been recovering from hip surgery and how is Martin Pospisil doing following the injury that ended his stellar world championship showing? Now, let's first talk about Vladar and see what Craig Conroy's answer was. So he said, before Vladdy, Vladdy is Vladar, not Vladdy Guerrero Jr. Before Vladdy left, he was doing squats and was moving well and it looks like everything is tracking right on schedule. So that's positive well what is the schedule what are we kind of seeing here for Vladar what's a timeline Conroy says hopefully he'll be ready by the end of August so before training camp really starts getting going that's why we got it done a little earlier so he'll be back ready for training camp well there you go I'm sorry Craig I kind of tried to paraphrase you and it sounds like I'm just mooching off you I would never do that on Flames Digest that's not our way um, but either way it is good to know that Vladar is back on track because let's face it he's probably going to be the backup goalie for the Flames next season. Now, whether that is behind Wolf or Markstrom, we will have to see. In all likelihood, Markstrom will be dealt. I think that's what most people want at this point. And then Wolf can really maybe not start out as the main starter and Vladar can be super dependable. But by at least midway through the season, if not earlier, Wolfie can be the man. And it's great to have Ladar around. It sounds like he likes being here. He likes the organization. And I'm sure anywhere you're given a shot to play, you're going to want to be as a goalie. So good to hear that Ladar is back on track. What about Pospisil? Well, with Martin, it sounds like he's good to go. It wasn't as bad as we worried when we saw it. It was nasty looking. We got lucky with that one, which is positive. I think that is exactly what everyone did want to hear. Now, if we look at... Oh, that's the wrong button. If we look at Pospisil's stats from past this past season, we'll see just how valuable he is. So in 63 games this season... He only had 24 points, but it was kind of unexpected. It came out of nowhere. And you see, eight of those were goals. I swear I remember him scoring more than that. But if you look at the bottom right there, he shoots 6.8% this past season. If he can improve that number, he will be scoring 
left, right, and center. Hopefully one thing he's working on other, once his health is okay, that is what matters most, is his health first and foremost, especially upper body. Um, is if he starts practicing some high danger situations and get some good shots going, he could be such an elite player. So it's so valuable to the Flames that he is healthy going into next season. I think that is what we all want to see. And as you can see there, the plus 14 as well on a bit of a shaky Flames team, especially down the stretch, is very, very good. A Corsi 4 percentage well above 50%. We know what he offers. He is a great player. We, you need a player with grit. Hopefully he can tone down some of the cheap shots and very injury potential plays both for his opponents and himself. We want him to be healthy. We don't need him suspended either. And we don't want to see anyone get hurt at the end of the day. But Pospisil, great to see that he is back on track. Sounds like he's already pretty much ready to go. And that is exactly what I think we all wanted to hear from this injury update. This is Perfect for the Flames. Now let's just finish off this article with one last note from the article, the aforementioned article that I have been using for the past three days. Thank you so much, Eric Francis, for interviewing Craig Conroy. It has provided so much content that we all wanted to hear. This isn't just for me. This is for all Flames fans, of course. Now, if we hop into this one question that I found very interesting, and it is revolving around the Washington Capitals purchase of Cap Friendly, which might not seem like a big deal to some people, but internally for managerial teams, scouting teams, whoever, they use that a lot. Us in the media, I'm counting myself as Flames Media, we use it so much. I mean, how many screenshots of Cap Friendly have I used in videos in the past? But either way, let's see what Francis asked. So he said, with the Washington Capitals buying CapFriendly.com and soon to be cutting off public access to it, thanks a lot, Caps, uh, do you have an in-house resource like that? It is important to know. We want to know if the Flames have a good resource to keep track of all these contracts, especially with all of the trades conditions, signings, everything. So here's what Conroy said. We have something similar. It's probably not as detailed as Cat Friendly was, but very similar. I would say we have 80% of what they have and there are some tools we don't have that we will build in. If you're a developer, I would suggest sending your resume and portfolio into the Calgary Flames right now if you want to make a difference. Um, here's continued Conroy. Conroy. So we're good to go. That was one of the things, trying to get everything in-house to where you're not using outside websites. I will say Cat Friendly did a great job and you'd always use them as a resource comparing it to ours. So it's interesting to hear that it's not just us average Joes using Cat Friendly to keep track of things. It's also genuine NHL organizations, franchises, managerial teams, whatever you want to categorize it as, is using this same site to keep track. It was so clean, so perfect. Honestly, this is going to make me dislike the Washington Capitals. I've never had a vendetta against the Caps. There it is. And of course, it was the Caps who purchased Cap Friendly. I hate it when it's ironic and it makes sense and it's just stupid. But either way, I want to be happy again. So let's dive into the comment of the day. Now, this one does come from a couple videos ago, but I really did like this one here from user Owen Hockey 151 It's again about kind of giving some players within the system a chance. Is it a make or break season for them? Who are we going to give a chance to? I like this comment. I'm not too bothered if none of them make it to the NHL. Them in this case is Schwint Klapka and who was it? It well, I can't even remember. We need to prioritize the prospects we draft now and for the next couple of seasons while continuing to play guys like Zary, Coronado, and Wolf. Yes, Zary is mainstay NHL. Wolf will be too. Hopefully Coronado will be as well. And we should see certain players come up like Hansik, Lipinski, uh, Brusevich, Sam Morton. I know it was the same. It's around the same comment to the day yesterday almost, but I do agree. We don't have a ton of elite prospects. It's the ones we start drafting now in this year's draft and for probably the next couple drafts that we really should be focusing on. We don't need to worry too much about the guys who might have make or break seasons. But regardless, thank you so much for commenting that. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe if you like what you saw here today and have a wonderful rest of your day.